Welcome back. A nasal spray developed by Johnson & Johnson may be the key to fighting uh, treatment-resistant depression. It contains a form of ketamine, which is a well-known uh, street drug. A panel of experts trying to convince the FDA now to approve it. Joining us right now is Dr. Mikhail Varshavsky, also known as Dr. Mike, and it is good to see you. Dr. Good to see you. Mike. What do you think about this? You know, uh, we haven't had a breakthrough uh, in the form of treatments of depression in like 25 years, so it's about time that we're starting to get some pharmaceuticals out there that can mitigate the effects of depression. But before everybody runs away with the story, we need to hold our horses. Why? This is a drug that's going to be used in a very specific subset of patients for severe treatment-resistant depression. So this isn't a first-line medication. I don't want patients running to their doctors and saying, I've been taking this medication for years. Let's try this new ketamine thing. That's not what this is for. This is in very specific instances. We don't yet know the long-term safety profile of this. There's a lot of questions to be had. So when patients see an ad like this come out, there's a lot of press happening. They get very excited. I want them to know that if they're curious, ask your doctor, have the conversation, and only then will we start making steps to figure out what this drug is going to be good for. Mm. Well, ketamine is a very heavy drug. I mean, it's yeah. a big sedate. I mean, that puts down a horse, right? So, I sure. mean, that's, that's, I mean the, the effects and ramifications are huge, let alone just from taking it as a street drug, but I'm sure as a nasal spray. Yeah, so there's different dosages, and obviously that matters. It's, that's what uh, plays a role in how the drug is activated, because if you take high doses of ketamine, Ketamine, it does cause hallucinations, uh, sedation, and that's what traditionally it's been used for. But now in these lower doses, we found anecdotally success with this very severe depression. And here's why there's a lot of hype around this. The drug acts very quickly. Traditionally, the medications we use for depression, specifically SSRIs, they take weeks to start working. And this is very difficult in patients who have suicidal ideations and need help now. And what we found with ketamine is that we've seen results happen as soon as four hours, 24 hours. Wow. And this can give a lot of promise to patients who are battling with severe depression, suicidal ideation. And that's why psychiatrists all around the country are very interested to see the long-term safety profile, how to dose this drug correctly. But again, we have all these questions. Johnson & Johnson is currently doing phase three trials on this. So we'll see where it goes from here, but I don't want people to jump the gun too early. Wow. I, I like this next story. Forget the treadmill. Push-ups are the new key to your cardio health. <laughs> yes. So according to the, this new studio, uh, this new study rather, out of Harvard, the T. H. Chan School of Public Health finding that men with the ability to do over 40 push-ups have a 96 percent lower cardiovascular risk than those who could barely do 10 push-ups. Uh, but, what do you but, think? But is that tied to other stuff? The fact that you can do 40 push-ups probably means that you're otherwise healthy? Yeah, so obviously that's the case. I always tell my patients they should be exercising, doing push-ups. The official recommendation is to do both weighted exercises, like push-ups where you're using your own body weight, and cardio. The reason why this study it's gets Joe me Biden. excited. Yeah. <laughs> Bad news, Joe Biden can only do 39. Oh, my God. I don't know. I don't know how that, well that predicts his cardiovascular risk. But... What we found in this study, and which is interesting, is that being able to do 40 push-ups is tied to better cardiovascular disease outcomes than those with really good aerobic capacity. So before we used to say, well, let's th throw you on the treadmill, do this specific test that we do and see what your outcomes are going to be. In reality, push-ups may be a cheaper and easier alternative to do the same thing. Mm. So get on the floor and do those push-ups. I like that. Dr. Mike, it's good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Mikhail Varshavsky there.